What's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Speedrunning SC2. In the last episode we made a legendary achievement by winning against a 6-2 Zerg with only Reapers. I showed you guys one of the coolest Zerg cheeses ever. Now let's find out what today has in store for us. Alright, first opponent of the day is going to be a Replicant, a 5-8-5 Terran player. Let's see the race we get. We're gonna be Zerg. Okay. Now I'm not quite sure if... I feel like a fun. I'm Zerg. Obviously, I want him to know because uh, they scout the latest against Zerg, as I always say. Now, I wanted to say, I'm not quite sure if that Ling Drop strategy would work against the Terran. I don't think it would. I'm actually pretty temp... Guys. Should I just... You know what? Frick it, guys. I'm going to freaking try it. I'm going to try the absolutely absurd Ling Drop strategy that I did against the uh, Protoss in the last episode to see if that works against Terran. Now... As a Terry player myself, I would say there's absolutely no shot that works because, you know, even four Hellions can deal with 16 links. But I just think you never know. Maybe we'll find out absolutely amazing cheese. Maybe we'll win completely on accident and figure out the new best cheese ever. Now, for now, uh, last episode's Link Drop has the title of coolest cheese ever. If this one works, this is going to take over as the coolest cheese ever. Now, obviously, at this point, I've done so many cool cheeses, I can't even keep track. I wonder if you guys know what your favorite thermal cheese ever is maybe you can't even remember i guess some of my planetary fortress rushes are amazing cheeses as well or just proxy hatches etc etc now he's gonna scp scout me probably at the time the barracks finishes and see that my natural is late now no one ever plays 1717 against terran this is the thing um people would play maybe like 16 pool and then take an expansion um and then after that get a gas stuff like that sometimes they'll get the gas a little bit faster if they want to do a roach attack but a 17 17 like this is very weird to do against terran so we'll see now one of the scariest things is also a reaper is very likely just gonna see uh you know that i'm making a lair really fast and that's gonna be quite problematic now, I don't quite remember. I think I can get speed after the Overlord, right? I was confused about this too in uh, the other game I played. I'm going to keep my Overlords here. This is actually... Okay, that's an SCV. I thought it was a Reaper for a second. I'm not quite sure if I should keep my Overlords there because the Reaper might come down here and it's just going to see that uh, my both Overlords are in the same spot. And even though he might not necessarily expect a Ling Drop because it's weird, um, maybe he'll just expect something weird, right? Which is not what we want. We don't want him to feel suspicious in any way. And I saw the Reaper already jump out, so that is great. See, I know the Reaper is coming somewhere. Maybe I can uh, put my links there on that high ground over there. Start a lair instantly. There we go. Maybe I should get a queen on this hatchery right away too. Um, wait, where's this Reaper actually? Did he send it back home? I thought it, sh it should have been here by now for sure, I want to say. I haven't seen it yet though. Now I made three more links. Keep in mind, I want 18 Zerglings exactly. Which is two more sets from now on basically. So I can make these. And the thing here is, I want to follow this up with a Nidus once again, right? So, uh, I guess I'll make more Queens if I can. Ideally, wait, I do need another gas. I know that now. I know that from the last one. I'm really trying to... Normally, I'm explaining everything to you guys, right? now. I'm also explaining things to myself. I want to execute this as well as I possibly can. Now, these overlords are going to get closer. Let's see. Oh, there's a Reaper in my base. That is kind of annoying. I still don't think he's going to be expecting... Uh, this freaking link drop though because this is so freaking strange oh there's something over here that's annoying but maybe he's also going to distract himself with that a little bit so i'm not quite sure if it's all bad okay let's see so he found these two he's never gonna see this coming though like this is such an absurd strategy i can't afford the night is just yet i'm gonna be able to put it down now now i have six links that are gonna go there Okay, let's see. I mean, this is actually very exciting, to be honest, because... Wait, where did that queen go? Where are you going? Oh my goodness, okay. Let's get into the main base. Here we are. Gonna attack these and then get also my uh, links into the natural. I can even evacuate these. Let me kill this uh, thing over here. Let's see. I got links in the natural now. Oh my god, this is actually going pretty insane. This strategy is looking pretty strong. Okay, he does have... Um, he does have, what's it called, a cloak of banshees on the way. That is going to be pretty scary. Now, good thing I can just make an overseer. Let's see, I'm going to keep those here. Should I make some more queens? I'm not quite sure. Okay, so Nidus is being built. I'm just going to run these around for now. Let's see if I can do some extra damage. Queens are going to finish at some point. 
Okay, am I gonna get a transfuse? No, I don't get the transfuse. Oh, oh what a shame. There was such a beautiful cheese, but it's barely not gonna work, it seems like. That is super unfortunate. I guess I'll just put it down here. Get it covered by some links. I do have a queen here, which I can actually harass with. Which sounds very funny. I mean, it is pretty funny, to be fair. Let's see, just attack these hellions right now. I got a queen that's gonna attack his stuff over here. I don't think I can transfuse this. Oh, just a little bit too late again. That's unfortunate. Okay, my queen is doing some work here, though. I need a, I need, a, I need money. Please give me money. Okay, there we go. Oh, I think it's just gonna be a little bit too late, guys. I can put down some creep, maybe. Okay, let's pick this off. I think this time we are gonna be held though. And I don't have enough queens anymore to make this happen. Yeah, I think it is all done and dusted for us, guys. I tried my best. If my knight was a little bit in a safer position, maybe we would have had a shot. Doesn't seem like it's gonna quite work out, unfortunately. If I maybe put it in a safer place, I think we would have been completely fine here. But I was a little bit greedy. And that is what's gonna cost me this game. I do think the cheese was absolutely beautiful still. But uh, not quite beautiful enough, I'm afraid. Let's see. Stop rallying over there, please. Let's see if we... Oh, this is a really nice surround, though. I have a lot of links here, guys. I mean, I know it's a lot of Hellions, but that was as good as it possibly could be, I think. Let's get those back in. I don't think... Do I have any queens left? I think that might have been my last queen, actually. Oh, man. This could have been the most beautiful cheese ever, but instead it wasn't. Now, let's see if I was right that we would have had a really good shot here. When does the Nidus come down? Nidus is going to come down. We've already killed eight workers at this point. He's down to 24, which is really nice. Yeah, if, I think the problem is just that I... Kind of his Hellions were like right there. Maybe if I put the Nidus in the natural, it would have been fine. Like, to be honest, guys... If you watch this from your POV as a spectator, you might feel like, well, you kind of got owned. Those queens did nothing. If I get four queens with transfusers in his base at the same time, there, I don't think there's anything I can do. I think he would have to run to the natural. This is a beautiful cheese. I'm going to try it again later. For now, I'll take the L, but let's do a better cheese in the next game. Let's go. All right, game number two against Orient, a Terran player on Royal Blood Ellie. Now, let's see what we get. I kind of hope I get Zerg again. Okay, I really want to try the strategy again. I want to redeem myself. I want to prove to you guys that that strategy is also fantastic. Now, the last time I guess Terran with Protoss, we went for a Proxy Void Rape. This time, I'm going to be going for a Proxy Robo then. Good luck, have fun. Uh, should I tell him I'm Protoss? No, I don't think so, right? I should. I think I only tell Terrans my race if I'm Zerg. Once again, guys, I'm not telling them my race to be nice. I'm telling them my race when it's convenient for me. Uh, which I think is totally fair to do, since random has its disadvantages, of course, as well, right? So, um, yeah, I think against Zerg, they scout the latest. So when I'm Zerg, I tell Terrans what I am. If I'm not Zerg, I probably just don't say anything. Now, I'm going to go for a slightly faster gateway. It's nothing crazy. Just want to make sure I can uh, hit a little bit faster. Now, I might actually need another... Do I need another probe sending out? I'm not sure. Okay, so there's the SCV. It's going to see what race I am anyway. It's actually funny that he was already moving out very fast. So uh, that is, you know, probably surprised to see me run into him even faster. Normally with random, you don't really scout that fast. Let's see if I can stick around. Uh, when do I need to make my pile? I need to make it pretty soon, but not yet, I think. Gonna go for the second gas. And yeah, I guess now I'll just go away and hide it. Oh, this seems actually like a prime time spot for a proxy robo. How long does a core take to build? 36 seconds, yeah. So that's actually something that's good to know for the future. You technically need to start your proxy pile on 18 seconds after you start your cybernetics core. Um, and then you're perfectly in time. I'm not quite sure on the gas count I need, but I think it's going to be okay. I need to be, be careful to not make it too close. I think if I build it here, a Reaper could actually see it if it walks like that. So I'm going to build it a little bit further down. I do think this strategy has a lot of potential. I once saw a really cool proxy robo by Haas. I think he might have executed this against Kelezer. I think it was. I'm pretty sure Kelezer won that game. But I still thought it was a really awesome cheese. I don't even remember the map that it happened on. That was so long ago. But yeah, let's just go for the instant robo. And then the plan here is to go for immortals. Ideally, I go for batteries as well. But... I feel like usually the probe gets taken down or something like that. They don't really get to execute the battery stuff. Um, but then in that case, I can go for a warp prisoner. It would still be totally fine. 
Now, my opponent might not have gone for a Reaper. I think it would have been good for me to scout that. I would have needed a second uh, probe for that out. Oh, I actually got spotted here. Can I escape? I'm surprised he saw that, actually. This seems like such a good hiding spot. Uh, but okay, I guess we'll have to deal with it. Robo was already about 70% done, so that's nice. Let's see. Oh, he's not, he's not paying attention. Is he going to lose that Reaper? No, not quite. Oh, are we playing against a double gas here? We might be. Let's get uh, a chrono boost on that immortal going. And he, it kind of looks like he was trying to surround me. Oh, he's going to lose that Reaper. Perfect. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful there. I think this... this I can also out micro him here if I target the Reaper. Okay, there we go. He might lose that Reaper. Oh, it was really close. My uh, Adept is coming though. He might actually be surrounded here, guys. He's going to be surrounded. I think he's going to lose that Reaper instantly. Watch this. There we go. A little bit of micro. And we got it. I do need to make a warp prism with that. Also, ideally, I would have had a third gateway by now. That's a little bit of a mistake by me. Uh, but that's all right. Since my opponent playing double gas, this can actually go both ways. Double gas is good against cheeses. Unless you actually commit to making... Yeah, exactly. He went for Reaper, Heli, and Expand. Which means he's not going to have a whole lot of units that are not the Reaper and the Heli. And which are simply not that good against this kind of stuff. You see, the reactor is going to die instantly. If I would have to guess... He is probably, uh, yeah, working on a tank or something like that. Oh, this is going to be perfect timing, though. Watch this timing, guys. The prism comes out, and I'll be able to drop on top of the tank, making sure it cannot shoot. Tank goes down instantly, and that is such a good start. Oh, he does have a freaking Viking, though. I didn't see that one coming. I'm going to try to warp in two Zealots right away to cover for that uh, Immortal right here. We are absolutely stuck in the back of his base now, though, which is very rough. But at the same time, he has no mining. This might be a tough one here, guys. I'm going to make sure to kill all of his uh, depots at least that I can. Maybe even get the gas. He already lost all of his gas income. But I can just shoot that tank from here if he's not careful. He's probably going to siege that back there if I had to guess. So right now, there's absolutely no gas mining. I'm going to... Oh, I'm actually supply blocked a little bit here. That's unfortunate. Let's get a few depots out. Now he's going to run back into the main. But the main base is also not mining, guys. It is five minutes into the game. Okay, he's trying to target this one. I'm actually going to try to shade out with these adepts to maybe keep something alive. Let's target that marine. Can I? Wait, I couldn't reach that? Oh, that's actually kind of surprising. Okay, so I'm going to get two immortals. I do have a lot of gas here that I can't use. I mean, I guess I could technically warp in some sentries, which are just not that terrifying. I only have one minute left to make this happen. And now we're going to get into a bit of a weird position because I would say I'm definitely in a good position. But is it enough to conclude that I'm going to win this game? I would say not yet. Now I do have, uh, like I said, another minute. I'm going to get a prism. And the prism is going to have two immortals inside, which is going to be massive. Now what do I want to do? I don't really warp in, want to warp in... Oh, I should have warped in with the prism actually. I don't really want to warp in mass sentries despite having the gas. Because in the end, it is just sentries. Now I'm going to try to go for a massive play here. This is going to be a fun one. Check this out. Let's see. Uh, can I... Oh, I don't have enough to hallucinate it. There we go. I'm going to hallucinate two immortals. Oh my god, check this play out guys. Are you guys hyped for this play? I think this could absolutely be massive. Here we go. And then the prism is going to come in. I'm going to pull the probes as well. He's going to think these are real. And then... Yeah, you see, he actually moved the freaking widow mine away. And the prism got in. And now we're going to be able to break this bunker quite easily, I think. Here we go. That bunker is going to fall. I do need to bring these units in. Let me one-shot that Viking. Because that's what Immortals are the best at. I'm not going to make any more units because six minutes has passed. But I think that genius play with the hallucinated Immortal is actually going to win us that game. That was absolutely beautiful, guys. Look at the timing on this. This was... This was just perfect. I couldn't have wished for it to be better. Maybe you guys didn't realize, but let me show you guys quickly. I went in at the front. He sees I'm going in at the front. Unburrows this widow mine just as the prism goes in because he thinks my entire army is here. I didn't even see the widow mine. I would have face tanked it with my prism and lost it to one Viking shot. But instead, I get in, target the tank, target the bunker, and the hallucination play was absolutely massive. Very happy with this one. Let's go to game number three. All right, here we go. A Grandmaster Protoss player, an ancient cistern. The green map, as some people call it. Now, I'm going to be playing Terran. And what is a disgusting cheese we can do against this Grandmaster Protoss? That's what I'm wondering. 
I kind of want to do something that's like so absurd and so cheesy. I mean, that's like the entire speedrunning show, to be fair. Uh, <laughs> but I'm not, really I'm not really managing to think of anything. I would have liked to do maybe a double proxy Rax Marauder, but I think that strategy is a little bit too weak. Uh, oh, wait, I have I have an absolutely absurd idea. I'm a little bit late, but I have an absolutely absurd idea. And you guys know me. If I have an absurd idea, if you see that light bulb light above my head, I just have to go for it. Now, I'm definitely going to be a little bit late. How am I going to execute this? Um, I'm trying to explain my idea to you guys. I think I'm going to have to make a barracks at home. So what I wanted to do was make something at home. Probably a barracks. And then also make a barracks to fly it in my opponent's base. Because on this map, I'm not sure if you guys have noticed, but the main is huge. You can easily hide something here. Now, what cheese can I possibly do that finishes someone in, you know, six minutes that has two barracks and one at home and one proxy on a really big map? Guys, I don't know, honestly. I really don't. But we're just going to find out and see what's going to come out of my hands and my brain. It's going to be a combined effort. I'm not uh, going to be consciously helping because I don't really know, but I guess we'll see. Oh, the juke. Yes. Oh, that is issue issue GG out of respect, to be honest. Like, that's just, you know, if your probe gets owned like that, it's just, nah, just kidding. I mean, it's very nice, though. You guys know, if you've played Terran against Protoss before, how annoying it is to get your worker harassed over and over. So this it does feel fantastic. Now, do I need a second gas? I, I guess I'm just going to make Marauders from both barracks. Wait, could I? Do I even have to fly it in? I'm not 100% convinced I do. Uh, is it? Maybe it's even better if I don't fly it in. No, I'm just gonna go for it. I mean, it was the plan. I guess we're just gonna see what comes out of this. Um, I Yeah, it might have been better if I didn't fly it in because then it's like a little bit harder to spot. The problem with Marauders is Marauders die to probes. And besides that, Marauders also die to um, batteries, right? So if I attack with everything at the front, then... I would probably get denied by a single battery. But if I separate them, I might die to the probes, which is equally scary. Now, I'm going to make a third barracks. There's nothing I can do here, really. I could make... Wait, I, if I save that SCV, I can use it to make a bunker to plug his wall. That would be an absolutely massive play. Because, um, like, if people wall off like this, you can see it already. If they wall off like that... Oh, there's an adept. Maybe I can kill that one. I'm actually, it's gonna, I don't think it's going to die. It's going to take a lot of damage, though, which is going to be nice. Do need to make sure to not rally that one. That was a little bit of a mistake by me. And I'm going to use that. Maybe he's going to finish it. Yes, perfect. Wow, that's a really, really good start there. He's going to have to recall that instantly, which is nice. But what I wanted to show was, if they wall off like this, you can plug their wall with just one bunker. And that's all you need already. So I'm just going to be able to make a bunker here. And now he's just stuck in his base. Like, he's going to be able to defend it, of course, with his, uh, you know, his battery and stuff. But it's going to be really annoying to deal with him already. I don't even have to finish it. I can just be attacking his gateway. And I'm going to save my Marauders there. Maybe I should start going for Stim as well. I actually have a better idea. I'm going to replace that with an Engineering Bay. Just a little bit of extra health on that. There we go. I'm going to go back. I'm going to start Stim on the barracks in his main. Just for the dramatic effect. Uh, which is, yeah, that's always very fun, of course. And now, wait, I can wait for four Marauders and then one-shot them. I am afraid there's gonna be, what's it called? Oh, he's gonna run into more Marauders. Yeah, he has a Stargate, I want to say. I feel like I'm 100% sure he has a Stargate just because he was YOLOing across. He figured he would be able to defend with just his uh, air unit, and that's why he was shading across. He's wasting all the energy on the Oracle, though. I got four Marauders now, and I'll be able to one-shot the probes in his main. Okay, this is actually the dumbest cheese ever. There we go. He has a battery, but now I can one-shot them. Look at this. And he's going to try to pull, but now, since I have so many Marauders, I can actually do a lot of damage. I'm gonna try to kill that pylon over here. This has to be the dumbest she's ever done. What if he makes one void ray? I don't even know what would happen if he were to make one void ray. He'd probably just kill all of my marauders for free, but for now, this is working perfectly. He made a phoenix and not a void ray, which is really nice for us. I mean, he's making building, but I can just easily kill that. That's not even a problem at all. And he's losing more and more units. Can I kill the star? He's making another oracle instead of a void ray. A void ray would have been so much better. That is already dead. He's gonna use both of his zaps to come here. But I have so many marauders, guys. I'm gonna launch a depot. He's gonna run out of energy on that oracle at some point. 
Now he's gonna see I'm making stim on this barracks and he's probably gonna feel a little bit disrespected because I'm making stim literally in his base. And we have just annihilated the Grandmaster Protoss with the most ridiculous Marauder cheese ever. And guys, this episode was just incredible. It was almost perfect. If that amazing cheese in game one would have worked, I would have said this is the best episode ever. An amazing Protoss cheese with the hallucination an absolutely ridiculous Terran cheese and one of the coolest Zerg cheeses ever to make out for a nice try. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Make sure to give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you all for the next one. Adios.